I don't know about you guys, but there are so many incredible and not so incredible games on the eShop that sometimes I just feel overwhelmed when I'm trying to find something new and I either end up defaulting back to first party Nintendo titles or I don't find anything. Agreed. There are just so many games that get loaded onto there every day that some really amazing titles just get buried underneath the wave of new releases. So we've made it our mission in this newly established underrated game series of ours to draw your attention away from the current offers section of the eShop and onto some of our favourite games that we just don't hear people talking enough about. And the games that we hopefully want to introduce some of you to today are part of the Atelier series. This franchise has been around for almost as long as I have, and for all that time, Gust has been working with Koei Tecmo to release games mainly for the PlayStation since 1997. But a lot of them have been re-released on the Switch, along with some new releases as well. The Atelier games have always had a strong emphasis on gathering, crafting, in this case synthesis, and turn-based combat. These mechanics are constantly changing and evolving, taking a different form with every installation in the series, and over time have grown and refined into the beautiful RPGs that we have today. There are so many magical Atelier games to choose from, but without a doubt some of the best and most fully realised games in the series, and the ones that truly earn their spot as the most underrated games on the Switch, have to be Atelier Riser 1 and 2. If you're new to the series, this is where we suggest you start your alchemic journey. One of the areas we really feel like the Riser games excel in is with their development and execution of turn-based combat. This revolves around a pretty unique time-based system, taking something kind of boring like turn-based combat and spicing it up a little bit. Up at the top left of the screen, you can find a rotating battle clock, which will show whose turn it is next, and how much time you have left to make your move. And make it fast, because the flow of battle doesn't stop for no one. And if you take too long to decide what your move will be, well, you miss out. Along with timing your moves right, you will also collect AP, or BP in Riser 2, which can be used on performing special moves or on increasing your overall tactics level. This allows your party members to auto-attack more frequently. Your tactics level stacks as well, so the more points you put into this, the more times your party gets to attack per turn. This can be a really valuable mechanic, especially in the harder boss battles that you'll face later on. As you beat up all of these monsters, you will also accumulate core charge points, or CC. These points allow you to use items you have synthesized. So to use items in battle, you are limited by the amount of CC you have. But these points are also stackable and are gathered by each character. So you are able to chain items from each of your party members to deal massive damage in one turn if you choose to do so. This can be extremely satisfying if you manage to pull it off. Riser 2 makes use of these abilities but also improves on the battle system by introducing defensive moves. These allow you to perform a perfect guard of time correctly, causing you to take less damage when you get hit. The Riser games contain so many different elements that come together to create a truly deep and complex combat system that is an absolute joy to master. But the secret to the battle system in the Atelier games is to focus on alchemy rather than just grinding for levels like a lot of other JRPGs. Of course, having a high level is important and plays a part in combat, but you will see far better results by leaning further into the crafting side of things and really focusing on creating superior weapons and items to capitalize on damage. Alchemy and Synthesis is the backbone of any Atelier game, and it's the main focus of the gameplay loop, playing an essential role in combat, story progression, and gathering. The crafting mechanics are different in every Atelier game, which helps them all retain a distinct identity and prevents the series from becoming boring. Since there are so many Atelier games, Gust has had a long time to develop the best alchemy system and we think that the Riser games have really cracked the crafting code. The Riser games also have an auto add function. So if you'd rather not get involved in the ins and outs and the complexities of synthesis, you can just pick whether you want to use high or low quality ingredients and then let the computer do its magic. But once you get the gist of this alchemy system, it is extremely enjoyable to use. So it's worth learning how to do so. The goal of synthesis is to create the highest quality item possible. As the higher quality your item is, the better it's going to work, essentially. When you're starting your synthesis, the recipe is going to call for an item to begin with. Once you supply this item, the adjacent slots will unlock, allowing you to add the rest of your ingredients. 
If the quality and elemental requirements of your ingredients are met, you can unlock even more slots, allowing you to combine even more items, increasing the quality and effect of the final product. Some of the items you use as ingredients also have their own effects. At the end of your synthesis, you can pick up to three of these effects to be applied to the final product, which can also upgrade its quality or give it a special ability, like having a stronger healing effect or making your weapon stronger against a certain type of enemy. The synthesis methods in Atelier Riser 1 and 2 are reasonably similar, but the way that you learn these new recipes is completely different in both games. As opposed to learning recipes by purchasing and receiving books like in the first Riser, in Riser 2 you can learn new recipes through a skill tree. This is a super fun mechanic as it really pushes you to create more things and explore new areas in order to earn enough points to unlock the next recipe on your skill tree. The only qualm that we have with the synthesis in the Atelier games is the lack of item descriptions. This makes it really hard to know what items do unless you craft everything and test it in the field. And maybe this is just what they were going for, but sometimes it makes the game overly complicated. For example, in Riser 2, we were struggling to figure out how to heal, but we just had to synthesize these grass beans. It just wasn't very intuitive, you know? Grass beans doesn't exactly scream health hack to me. We know that the developers probably wanted you to try and craft every recipe, but we can't help but feel just a little description, even something along the lines of explosive or healing item would have done this game a world of good and would have made the whole experience a lot smoother for newer players. Another important aspect of any Atelier game is gathering. And when we said that synthesis ties into everything, we weren't joking. Some of the items that you need to craft new recipes or progress in the story can only be gathered by tools that, you guessed it, you've synthesized. You will need to craft things like fishing rods, axes and bug nets to gain access to more and better quality ingredients to use in your recipes. These gathering tools are even further expanded upon in Riser 2 and you're now able to craft tools that allow you to summon a mount or even dive underwater. These tools open up the gathering areas dramatically and allow you to explore even more of these beautiful places. The gathering areas in the Riser games are truly magical and fully realized in a classic anime JRPG art style. The graphics look great in handheld and dock mode on the Switch with bright colors and adorable sprites. The music also pairs perfectly with the art style, working together to create a calming and immersive gameplay experience. Sometimes things like battle music in RPGs can become grating or repetitive, but we're happy to report that we found none of that here. Not only are the Riser games some of the most underrated on the Switch, but the whole Atelier collection itself is easily one of the most underrated franchises of all time. There are so many Atelier games that have been re-released on the eShop now. A lot of them came in trilogies that feature appearances by the same alchemists in each of the stories, which is a nice touch. It's always exciting when you see cameos of familiar faces in other games. Atelier Lua is another more recent release. So if you've already played Riser, this one is definitely worth picking up and also features some of the alchemists from the Arlen trilogy. So Lalua is a good middle ground or opportunity to delve into some of those older titles. If you're still unsure about the Atelier series or you want to learn more about some of the older games, then definitely check out Ursha Gaming's channel. She has heaps of reviews on the Atelier games and she was a really great resource for me when I was first looking into them. So we'll definitely make sure to put a link to her channel in the description. I also just wanted to say that if you're a guy and you don't think you'll enjoy these games because they look like girl games, don't be stupid. The whole concept of boy games versus girl games is ridiculous to begin with. And you're honestly just doing yourself a disservice by choosing not to play something because it has a female protagonist or it looks too girly. I personally enjoyed every waking moment I've had with every Atelier game I've ever played. And I implore all of you big, strong, barely manly men out there to just give this one a go. You might find that you have a ton of fun. Well, thank you so much for watching us bang on about Italia games for the last however long this video ends up being. We hope that we've introduced at least one person to some new games that you might not have otherwise tried. 
Let us know in the comments below if you've played any Atelier games before or if you're planning on doing so now. And don't forget to hit those like and subscribe buttons before you go. Thank you so much for hanging out with us and we'll see you again next week. Oh, oh please. <laughs> that wasn't me.